Hi, hello, and welcome to Capricorn Venus Tarot. This is Capricorn Venus. So today we're gonna see how do you surprise people? So what is surprising about you? We've got four piles. Pile number one is the Ethereal Visions Tarot. Pile number two is my new deck, which is the Cirque du Tarot. Pile number three is the, what is that called? Terramucha. And pile number four is the Horror Tarot. So go ahead and pick your pile and I will see you guys in there. Okay. No pile number one. How are you today? Let's see. How does pile number one surprise people? How does pile number one surprise people? I think definitely one of the things that surprises people about you pile number one is when you choose to say something and when you don't choose to say anything um i think people can't predict what you will decide to comment on that's a big thing with you okay um it's reminding me of like you know influencers they're asked to comment on every situation and the ones that you decide to comment on surprise people like what you kind of take up a mantle for or what you're like big hot button issues are. I think people are surprised by what you hold dear or like what you find to be important, okay? And what you'll speak up on, okay? What, uh, sorry, uh, how does pile number one surprise people? How does pile number one surprise people? 11 is Aquarius, so I feel like you are surprising in your personality. So I feel like being surprising is part of your personality. Um, so that's one thing. But also I feel like who you decide to be friends with surprises people. Um, yeah, what your circle is like is, is surprising. I feel like you're the kind of person that maybe when people meet you, they have an idea in their mind about who you're going to be friends with or who is probably your friend or something like that where they expect you to be in one click and then you're in another something like that. Okay, 10 is Capricorn. So your career might also be surprising. That's what I'm saying. I think part of your identity, Pile 1, is to be surprising. So you might have a career that looks, that you look significantly different than other people in your career. Or, um, yeah, just the way you like to live versus the way you look and appear to others upon first glance um, is very different. So you could look like someone who's very buttoned up and then they hear you curse. Or you could look like someone who um, only likes to go out to brunch, but turns out you like to like really party or you're very physically fit and you like to go on hikes or something. So, okay. And nine is Sagittarius, which is like higher education. Let's see. So it could be that you surprise people by the fact that you have a higher education. That could definitely be it. Um... Yeah, something about your schooling is surprising people. 9, 10, 11. I feel like you're further along than people expect. So you might look younger than your age, so your age surprises people. But I think also, no matter what your age is, people are surprised by how much you've accomplished so far. So you could also be like 21, and people are shocked by what you've accomplished in your life so far, or what you know about... Um, yeah, it's like you're smarter than other people and that surprises people. So I, I definitely think I'm going to include um, Who Harder by Amaretta because that's coming up in my mind um, because it's like people think they're going to shock you, but you end up surprising them. It's almost like people come to you like they're going to impress you with something or they're going to really blow your mind with a concept or... Um, they're going to go on and on about this niche interest that they know about and they don't believe you know about it. Okay. And so you surprise them when you do and when you can keep up and when you know exactly what they're talking about. And maybe you know more than them about what they decide to bring up. I think also, um, we touched on this with like your priorities, but what else surprises you is 
or surprises you, surprises people about you is that, is, is like where you like to vacation. What's your ideal day is. Maybe you seem so fun and lighthearted so people are surprised when your favorite season's winter, for example. Um, okay, the Hierophant and the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, I feel that you must be someone who seems very lighthearted and then you surprise people by your depth and seriousness and how you really think things through and what your whole life philosophy is, is what's surprising. That's how you're surprising people. That's how you surprise people in general, um, pile number one. Because Queen of Pentacles and the Hierophant, you're like someone extremely stable. I mean, that is the overlap I feel with these two cards is you are here to say you can't be moved. Um, you have everything under control. You have accounted for every possible um, bad thing that could happen. That's another thing. Like you're someone who's excellent in a crisis or never lets it get there. Never lets it get to a crisis. Um, so I'm thinking of two songs again. So your music taste might also be something that's very surprising. That makes sense. A lot of Aquarius placements, that's the case. Um, I don't know if it's our hipster tendencies or we just are open to random things that other people might discount as weird at first, but definitely your music taste surprises people. Um, but the two songs I was thinking of was She Never Lets It Go To Her Heart, because I'm saying it out loud so I can also put it in the description for you guys. So it'll already be there while I'm like sitting here trying to think of these songs. <laughs> she Never Lets It Go To Her Heart. <laughs> Who Harder? And then there was one other, but maybe I'll think of it later. But a lot of music is coming up in my mind for your pile. So I do feel that you also surprise people with your artistic lens because it's different when, than what they expect. I think with this aspect, it's like maybe they knew you were an artist or that they knew you had that kind of artistic flair or like a bit of a difference with you. But it went in a different direction than what they were anticipating. Maybe they look at you and they think you're a painter, but you're actually a guitar player. You know, something like that. Um, where... That might not seem like that big of a deal, but it changes people's perception of you. And they, yeah, they're just constantly surprised by that sort of thing. There's definitely something where a location you want to live or a location you are obsessed with is surprising to people. Or maybe it's like family history is surprising to people. There's something about your history or what you hold as like core memories or something is has surprised someone recently. Okay, interesting. Let's see. How does pile number one surprise people? The moon. Yeah, hmm. I think that you surprise people because they feel like they know your type of person and then they really just don't at all. You know, I feel like you, you, your whole thing is surprising. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I have a feeling this is going to be the most broad of all the piles because there's a lot of things that are surprising about you. So much so that what really surprises people about you is how much there is beneath the surface with you. Because there's all these little things that are surprising them, but overall, it's it's that you're so different than how they anticipated. So um, maybe it's I, I, you might have come across some more people who find themselves to be very um, smart and people who find themselves to be very good at psychology and that sort of thing. They might have analyzed you recently, so maybe that's why it's coming up, especially in your energy right now. Um, because you confuse people that are usually not confused by people. So yeah, my advice would be like, instead of wasting time trying to analyze the people around you, you should ask them questions and get to know them that way. Um, because there's no amount of analyzing that will tell you what someone would say to a question. You know, there's no, uh, no amount of analyzing somebody's room that's gonna tell you their favorite color if, unless you just ask, just ask. Just ask questions. Um, and I think that you encourage that in people. It's surprising that they felt like they knew you. Yeah, there's just something about that. People feel like they know you and then they don't. Maybe you have like a very large social media presence. So then when they meet you, they're like, okay, I know who this is. Um, it's not good or bad. It's just like, 
I know who this is. Um, I know a lot about them. I know everything about them. People, people have this idea that they know everything about you. And so pretty much everything surprises them about you, <laughs> about one. Um, yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me if you had a big social media, um, you could be an influencer. But I think also maybe you're just like a teacher or, oh, sorry. I feel like also what surprises people about you problem one is that they think they're in with you when they're not so you might have the problem where a lot of people think that you guys are a lot closer than you believe you are um okay the hermit and strength the moon strength and the hermit I think you also might surprise people and then death. Wow. This is all major arcana that's coming up. It's almost like people know you to be an extreme person, but then you're an extreme person in a totally different way than they thought you were. Like it's a totally different genre of difference. Definitely your artistic skill also, I think people maybe underestimate you, but it's not so strict like that. It's not, cause it's not like they thought lowly of you. They thought highly of you already, but it's like they, it turns out you deserved way more credit than they were giving you. They were giving you a decent amount, but you actually deserved way, way, way more. And so that's where the surprise is coming in. Strength Hermit. It surprises people how well you know yourself and how willing you are to do the hard work or, you know, look at yourself with a critical eye. You're not as insecure as people think you are. <laughs> like, that's surprising to them. Like, I, I don't know. There is this perception that if you have a lot of social media, then you're just, like, desperate for attention and... Um, you know, you're really insecure and you're trying to get validation or something. I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I think that that does happen for sure. Absolutely. Social media is a great way to vent your <laughs> insecurities and um, try to receive something back to soothe yourself. Sure. But I think nowadays it's like everyone has social media. So there's also ways you can have fun with it. Um, and so people are surprised that your social media is not as serious as they thought it was. You might even be the type to overshare, but then it's not as deep for you as all that. Like, again, I feel like maybe there's an uh, impression that you're sappier than you are, or you're not as stable, or you're kind of still going through it instead of just being open with your problems. It's like you're, you're surprising people because you're open with your problems, but you actually work through them on your own and you already have made significant progress or it's not really something that's coming up every day it's just something that you talk about it's not something you struggle with still that's the thing I feel like people you, you surprise people because you're not struggling with anything that's what they're that's what they're coming to anyway okay how does pal one surprise people They also might think you're more um, strategic and competitive than you are. This goes along with the insecurity thing. It's like they might assume that you're competing with them and then they're surprised to find that you're really, really not. Um, like you don't even think of that as an option. There's something about this where people are surprised because you might not even be participating a little bit with what they think you were to participating in. So again, this does lean into maybe you're an influencer. And so there's a lot of assumptions that come with people who have 
bad status. A big assumption is that you're very competitive and like um, looking at other people's pages and, you know, comparing yourself. That's the thing. I feel like you surprise people because you're not comparing yourself to them or you're not being comparative in general. I think you also surprise people and I, I've gotten this too. It's like you actually have real relationships, like deep relationships that do mean something to you. Um, cause there are times where you'll meet someone and you'll hear that they have a relationship. And I think that a lot of people just assume every relationship is bad. I can't blame them for that. I've seen a lot of bad relationships. So, um, it's like, there's this assumption that your relationship is bad or your friendships are fake. And then they're very surprised because they aren't and it's real and you do actually care. Um, or there's not this like, veneer of fakeness because I'm, I'm reading the energy and they're not looking at this old assumption they had as like so explicitly negative as we might they they just assume that every relationship comes with a little fakeness or they just assume that most um long-term you know ma most marriages for example um have a lot of backbiting underneath the surface but we just don't get to see that um you know and so when the curtain pulls back and you actually are the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> they're surprised by that because usually you pull back the curtain and it's and it's nobody and it's it's a, all a facade. But there's something about pulling back your curtain and seeing that you're even more important or even larger than life than what they assumed, or your your impact is even stronger than it is on the internet. Um, so again, if you're not an influencer or whatever, this pile could still. Um, apply but there definitely is something about people seeing you in multiple scenarios and that's when you're surprising them it's like they see you outside of work and you're even more a character than you are at work or something like that um okay three of pentacles it's the work energy too I think it surprises people that you don't mind doing things on your own, that you're very independent. Um, it surprises people that, yeah, there's definitely something that's got to be about your career versus how you are at home. Maybe you're very chatty at the workplace, but then you never like to hang out outside of work and that surprises people. Or maybe you like to hang outside of work, but you're always quiet at work. So th there's some kind of dichotomy with you, for sure. A dichotomy that they weren't expecting. You know, there's something so strong about your per persona, either at work or on social media or whatever this businessy kind of front that you have. It seems so real and so full and so valid <laughs> that your outside of this arena personality is shocking to people. Like not just surprising, but they're shocked by you. Um, there's a lot more. So you are like one of the most complex people that some people have met. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's how you surprise people pile one is you are more complex than they even thought people could be, okay? And that you're not done. I feel like another part of um, you that's like surprising people is that you're not done working, that you're working every day, even though you already have 10 of cups, even though you've mastered yourself and your insecurities, you are still working forward and you are still trying to see more and you still have this world all to your own. I even like the way these cards are facing. It's like, she's kind of looking up, um, daydreaming. He's got the, the lantern going towards and then strength holding the position and strong in their spot, which is clarified by the 10 of cups. So it's like, you have a home, you have stability, and you have forward motion, and this is what's surprising people. I think it's also surprising that you, maybe you don't want to move, or like you're very attached to the place you're living, or, because there, I am sensing, I think you'll have to know for yourself, because so many people are watching this, um, but there's something surprising about you, which is having to do with where you want to live, your memories about a certain place, and what you hold stock in, like nostalgia wise, what you find nostalgic, where you wanna go, that you don't wanna leave someplace. 
yeah, there's something about that. You not wanting to leave someplace. Okay. Anything else to close out? It's just, it's very surprising. And I keep wanting to say shocking how you balance everything. Um, because they really, I think people really thought they were going to pull back the curtain and they were going to be like, okay, here we go. Here's what's lurking beneath the surface. Here's where the issue is. Here's where pile one is falling short. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't look down on you for hiding that. They just assumed you were hiding it. They just thought, well, everybody's got stuff that they're not working on. So, um, or that is kind of falling through the cracks. So, um, I just don't know what pile ones is. So that's what's surprising people. So of sorts. Also, you will do what needs to be done to protect your family. Um, I feel like that is also what's surprising. It's like you're you're gonna do what needs to be done to protect your family, and you will get sneaky for that. But everything else is beneath your notice. Um, and yeah, I think it's surprising. Maybe you started going out more with friends, or um, you started hanging out with people outside of work, and they never thought you would, and they thought you were a loner, and they thought you didn't want to have friends. Um, so that is what I'm getting again with this nostalgia, something about the nostalgia, um, is shocking people right now or surprising people about you. So let's go ahead and pull some music videos to end off. Yeah. Just the fact that you do want company is surprising people right now. could also be you're more loving and kind of obsessed and in love than um people thought you were again that goes back to like maybe they thought you had a bad relationship but like they pull back the curtain and you're like obsessively in love with your partner or something like that definitely who you want to have friends with or who you want to be around or surround yourself with or um that you want to bring up everyone with you, okay? How does Pal One surprise people? How does Pal One surprise people? Yeah, but you meant what you said and who your friends are, that it's, that your friendships are really serious. Like the relationships being very serious and being very deep and um, your loyalty is actually surprising people. But I, I wouldn't take it hard because just, you know, what I've heard on, on threads, it's like there's a loyalty drought. So I think that's why it's surprising people. But that's what I've got for you, Paul One. I'll leave these down below. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Number two, let's clear this. So I got the, the new one out for you. So I think you surprise people with your dance moves, pal two. <laughs> this is the Cirque du Soleil uh, kind of one. I think you surprise people with, yeah, your rhythm, your athleticism. Maybe they thought you were like a real nerd. <laughs> And um, you're actually very active, you know? It's like sometimes we dichotomize those two things. It's like you can't love video games or reading and like going to the gym or and um, like to go for hikes or swimming or something like that. Two of wands and four of wands. Oh, I feel like um, you're surprising, you surprise people by wanting a family or wanting stability or wanting a long-term partnership. Maybe they see you as someone who's so young, like who needs who needs a family or who needs, um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not phrasing it in the best way. Let me phrase it a different way. I'm young and single and I wanna live out there and I wanna experience full, you know, spectrum of what their life has to offer and I wouldn't settle down and I wouldn't wanna, 
live in just one place, you know? <laughs> like that's what people thought. And so they're surprised, you're surprising people because even with you being so young and beautiful and, you know, prime for the market or something, you don't want that. You want romance, you want depth. Um, you want something that lasts forever, you know? I, I see you as being like a, a romantic and that is what's surprising people, that you're a romantic. Okay. Yeah, your wistfulness surprises people. They expect you to be like kind of a party animal. And so they're surprised when you are very, yeah, wistful and nostalgic. Um, very focused on your own potential. Like you're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your own potential. You feel like you're in the spring of your life. Like I need to work. I need to start things. I need to be planning big, thinking big. Um, maybe you journal a lot and you have like huge aspirations and you want to win. Um, and this is surprising to people because they kind of feel like you could just glide. Yeah. I feel like be there's something about you where people think that you could just glide and take life one day at a time and other people would help you and you wouldn't really have to do much. So maybe you're attractive, maybe you're young. I don't know what, why that was their assumption, but you're surprising people because you leap on every possibility or you leap at every opportunity. You're always, always starting a new trail and working on some new goal or, and, or working on old goal. You know, that's an, that's another thing that's surprising is that you, constantly work towards these things that people feel that you could just let go and that it's not that serious or so, something like that okay they kind of assumed you would be like that like oh it's not that serious um but no you're like it's very serious you kind of are like a life and death dramatic type and people are surprised by that the magician how does pal two surprise people when you got the magician you're brainstorming constantly. <laughs> like that is what's surprising people right now about you, pal too. You're, you've got, you always have something in the, in the works, on the back burner, getting ready to be brought to the center stage. Okay. There's definitely this sense of drama. I think the way you look at your own life very much surprises people as well. Okay, let's see. You view everything as very important. And again, there was this assumption that you would be flippant or not really care or not really remember what people said or um, not really think much about your rags to riches story or something, okay? Um, how does pile number two surprise people? Pisces, that makes sense. Leo also makes sense. And then Scorpio, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about this. No, these three would be the most dramatic signs. I feel like you are a drama queen, pal, too. Like, or drama king. Um, I just feel that you are... You have that flair, but it's more than flair because it's not just bright. It's also dark sometimes. You can go really dark. You can be like very much everyone's against me and that kind of like Scorpio vibe of I'm gonna get back at my haters I'm gonna get back at everyone who never believed in me and then you also have the Leo of let's do this tomorrow's a new day um you know all eyes on me don't I look good or like don't I look like my character in a book or uh, you're you're really giving that kind of energy and then 12 is Pisces and there's like dreamy and life is like a lake you know <laughs> I feel that I am on the lighthouse of my life and I look out over the sea and I, I call in who's meant for me. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from, but there's something about that with you. Maybe you just say weird shit, um, pal too, and it's surprising people. <laughs> They're loving it. I really feel like it's, it's coming out well. It's just like very surprising because they didn't know you had this sense of drama. Um, yeah, life and death and past lives and, you know, family curses and a lot of like fantasy kind of wording in your energy here. 
I feel like you'll also surprise people when you need to retreat. It's like your emotions overwhelm you and <laughs> you have to retreat from yourself. Like you have to go somewhere and think about something else. Or maybe you work out a lot because you just have to get out of this feeling. Or, or There's something about that where um, it surprises people that you're most dramatic even when you don't want to be. Or sometimes your emotions can kind of steer the ship and you'll end up having to spend the day doing something different just to suit yourself or just to change the narrative. And also I feel like um, you do things for the plot, pal too. Uh, and that really surprises people. People might not expect that, you know, drunken text or people might not expect you to come back and apologize. Um, like just for the plot, you know, I feel like you have this sense that might as well. It's good for the storyline. And, and so you do end up really actually surprising people um, by, by being in the mix like that. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there is just something very new and different about your energy, even to people who feel hardened. And we did get a little bit of that in the first pile. So I don't know if you watch both, but I do feel like with your dramatic flair and your intense feelings about things, you're able to surprise even the most keen-eyed or even the most hardened um, journalistic type brains. Okay, let's see. What else? Yeah, there's this sense of people being surprised when you take a step back and decide to think things through because they see you as so they they're surprised by your dramatic nature but then they get to know you a little more and they're like okay but they like the drama they like the intense feelings the highs and lows the storybook kind of life okay i get them but then you will take a back you know step back from the plot and take yourself out of the plot and think it through and take things slow so you you change it up that's the thing about you, pal, too. I feel like that's what's surprising about you is the way you, you don't stick to a script. You're really, yeah, you go off script. There's something about that. I don't know if somebody has literally thought that recently, but that's so strong. It's like, you go off script. Okay. How does pal one, or sorry, pal two surprise people? Judgment. It might be surprising what you what your judgment is about different people. So you might end up liking someone that everyone has given up on, or you might end up liking someone that everyone thinks is annoying. Um, there's something about you take on lost causes or old cases. I am getting this like detective energy from you too. You see what no one else sees. And it constantly is surprising people. Yeah, but it's, there is something um, more relevant to your energy, which is maybe you, you surprised people by taking someone back after they hurt you. Or maybe you surprised somebody by, yeah, liking the loser. Or, or your, your, impression of someone was better than what everyone else imagined it would be yeah there's something about your your judgment itself is what's surprising like who you give the a plus to and who you say also it could go it could go inverse maybe there's somebody that everyone likes that you don't like um and that's been surprising but i'm i'm more getting the other way the sun And all of these were in the inverse and I pulled them out. It's like you hide what makes you happy. You hide who you approve of. You hide the hard work that you do behind the scenes. This is also surprising people. Um, they're realizing that you're, you're not, You're purposefully not showing everything. That's what people are realizing and are being surprised by is that you are purposefully hiding your happiness, your judgment, and the hard work you do. That it, you are purposefully having it behind the scenes. Okay. 
okay? You're surprising people because you actually know you have the upper hand. Or you kept the upper hand the whole time. You are surprising people because actually I feel like you are like an archetype in my mind. It's kind of coming, it's almost like your personality and who you really are is coming into focus, is coming into the center of people's minds and they're surprised by it. Um, but what I'm seeing is people are realizing that you are a detective. You have a secret life, you have a dramatic front life, and you like intense, crazy situations. So you will go and invest yourself in those kind of situations. You might like a hard case to crack. Or yeah, you're, you're kind of this archetype. People are surprised because they're realizing you're this archetype of a detective who, who likes a hard case to crack. And maybe that's why you choose the people you choose. And maybe that's why you keep your hard work secret because you know that you're in the mix you know, or you know that there's danger there. Like you would expect a detective to be keeping things hidden because they are purposefully putting themselves in dangerous situations. They're, um, and that's just the idea of that. Uh, not like the reality of it necessarily, but I'm seeing here, it's like people are surprised because they're realizing that you, basically that you know what you're doing, but it's, it's a lot stronger than just that. It's like, this is your thing. I think people are surprised upon getting to know you. You surprise people when they get to know you. And I'm sensing that not everyone does. It's almost like you have to pick them. And even the ones you pick don't always get to know you. What makes you happy is surprising to people. So again, with that detective example, it's like maybe you get a kick out of a difficult person or you like to get to know difficult people or... Um, it makes you happy to have like an argument or it makes you happy to experience crazy situations or um, to solve something, to figure something out. You might be that person who really likes an intellectual hobby, but you kind of keep it to yourself. You know what's surprising is people thought that they, they thought that you were the underdog they were rooting for, but that was more of a facade that you put on. It's almost like, yeah, um, people thought that you were the underdog they were rooting for. People also thought that you didn't see your position. Like you didn't see, yeah, that you didn't see your position in the story. So I don't know if you're going through a plot right now. But it's almost like people didn't think that you knew, but you do know. So it's also reminding me of that music video, um, Without Me by Halsey. So I'll have to link that down below where at the end, she pretends that she's getting arrested with him, but actually then she winks and she's she's not in handcuffs and her frown turns into a smile and like she she's the one who put all of this into motion. Yeah, pe pe you're surprising people by being a ringleader and not wanting to be seen that way. It's almost like you don't want to be seen as a leader because you'd rather get in the mix. Okay. People are surprised um, by what you choose to walk away from and what you choose to go towards. I, I think that's the strongest thing is your moves just are always surprising people. Like, And you can be kind of brash, but I think it's because you set yourself up in a way where you're allowed. Yeah, it's like you set your life up in a way where you can get into these crazy situations and you're... Um, you can have your fun and get to know people that other people find too risky to get to know. And this must be because you just have really good judgment and you know when it goes too far. Like you never let it go too far.
it's so funny because Knight of Pentacles and Eight of Wands, it's almost like opposite energy. Knight of Pentacles is a slow mover and Eight of Wands is fast, passionate action. And judgment in Knight of Wands, Knight of Wands is also giving that kind of energy of sometimes you will just snap and go off or it's almost like this eureka moment of, okay, I figured it out. I'm out of here. Or, okay, I see what's happening. This is about to go too far. I'm going to sneak out while, we're, while the getting's good. Um, or, ooh, okay, I figured out what's going to make me the most money. And then you capitalize on it. It's like you have a slow, like behind the scenes, slow, um, meticulous, hidden process over a long period of time but then when it comes to make once you've figured out what you're going to do you catapult forward and this surprises people they figure if you're slow on the get to know then you'll be slow on the draw but you're not you're slow on the get to know and you're quick on the draw so you'll have to know what that means in your own life you definitely do whatever is suited to the moment the star you secretly have hope and a back door to every situation. Like you, you, you are the magician and the star. So, and judgment. So it's like, there's no situation that you can't find a back door out of. Um, and this surprises people. They almost think that, I feel like some people even think you're risky or you're emotional. And then when they see it all play out, they're like, oh my gosh, I was fooled along with the rest of them. Um, yeah, you pull out different things for different people. Because here we've got like the disguises. So you'll tell people what they want to hear. Or, um, I, and I think that's surprising that you were able to tailor yourself to different people or something like that. Um, that you hide different sides of yourself. That you know what people want and you give it to them and you kind of play into things. That's another thing about you that surprises people is that you really play into the scenario. It's not that you were swept away with the crowd. It's just that that's kind of fun to get swept up. And that's a, that's what people are seeing you now about too, is that people see you as someone who surprised them because you were actually just enjoying getting swept away. Um, it's not that they actually had you on the hook or something. You're like, okay, that plot line was fun. Let me move on. About to have another plot line. Um, so it's surprising people how, yeah, no, page of swords, yeah. Okay, new round. Reset. Like, maybe you look at life like a video game um, and this surprises people. So you're like, okay, well, that was fun. I learned what I could and had my fun. Um, got to know some interesting people and made some stories along the way. That was, that was enjoyable. Round two. Let's see what else we got. It's like you're not really hung up either. Just like a detective wouldn't be. If he solved the case, then let's go to the next case. Quickly. Yeah, you move on very quickly. That's another thing that surprises people. You move on very quickly. Even though it seemed like you were full on, really invested, like very, very, very invested. Um, even those situations you can move on from because you're invested in a way like you get invested in a novel. Like, so you are fully invested, but you can just as easily set down the novel. And then if you want to pick up the novel again, you'll be fully invested again. But you go with your, you go where your passions take you, but you're so particular and intelligent and smart. Smart and intelligent, yeah. Like, just smart about the way you walk, though, and the way you work things, that you're able to be as passionate and quick as you want to be. Okay. Let's pull some music videos. Well, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, you really let yourself follow your intuition and follow where the wind takes you. Um, and so, yeah, you let yourself get swept up in things. And you can just as easily pull yourself away from it. Okay, what is so surprising? I think this is other people. 
this one and good for you is like other people after you've left certain scenarios or certain stories it's like well I still remember all that story you know like I'm still in that story you just left it okay yeah and you you like a lot of people because you just find people interesting you just find experiences interesting You cause a lot of controversy. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely something about you just moving away from situations. You're like, okay. But at this, it, it, it's a controversy because it's like, you're both getting swept away in things. Like you can't stop yourself from, it's like in the, in the movies when a detective is like, well, that was gonna be my last case, but then this case came in that is exactly the kind of thing I like to look into. I can't help myself. I've gotta get involved. I've gotta know what happened. Um, and that's how you seem to be. And this is surprising people because you can have this side of you that gets swept up and can't help themselves, but, get invested in this type of person that you just find intriguing or get invested in a plot line that you know might be like kind of risky or um, or get enchanted by something and just walk off, you know, like, and you have that about you, but then you also can just kerosene it all down and move on quickly um, and seem completely happy and not really care about the controversy. So yeah, this is what I, I think people are finding surprising about you, or this is how you surprise people, um, pile number two. So I'll leave these down below and I'll see you next time. So you guys came out with, um, came out swinging even when I, was initially putting down the cards, pile three. Um, I feel like you surprise people because when they think you're gonna go right, you go left. That's a big thing. I feel like that is strong in your energy. It's not just that they cannot predict you, it's like they predict you and you do the exact opposite thing than they anticipated you doing. Um, King of Cups and Knight of Wands. Hmm. You don't mind saying a harsh word. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't mind telling someone exactly how they hurt you or telling someone exactly um, what they think, what you think is wrong with them or um, what you think that their worst quality is or what you think is the mental blockage that's creating their uh, problems. You might be somebody who has like a therapeutic kind of knowledge about people and but people are surprised because you don't mind saying it. It's like if you read that somebody's got issues, you will tell them. Or maybe not always, but this is what's surprising people is that you would or you have told people what you think is holding them back. You know, what um, thing from their childhood or psychological issue you think they might have is stopping them from achieving what they want. Or you might be that kind of person who also will be like, well, it kind of sounds like your dad is the main problem in your entire life and is holding you back from achieving what you wanna achieve or being the person you wanna be. And people are shocked by this. <laughs> like, you're really surprising people by not holding any ties in a way. Um, not holding any ties in a way. Like, you'll look at something with a logical, emotional lens so you'll be kind of cold-hearted about it and this is surprising people you won't pull punches just because the problem in somebody's life is their mom or the problem in somebody's life is they're drinking too much or the problems in someone's life are these taboo things that nobody wants to bring up or everybody else would be too afraid to say that well maybe you feel like shit because you're eating fast food all the time <laughs> you know, like, um, 
if someone's gonna ask you, you're gonna tell them. You know, like if someone is like, oh my gosh, my my arm is hurting and, and you're like, okay, well, when's the last time that you stretched? And they're like, never. And you're not afraid of, <laughs> you're not afraid of that. Hmm. You're just like, you, you're so easily able to uncover what is not supporting the life that people are trying to create. Like you're the kind of person who will just pull out the thorn in someone's paw that's been there for years and everyone else has been too afraid to say anything or too afraid to bring this up to that person. It's like, oh wow, you're being kind of an ass. Like you, you, would, you would do something like that. And maybe the person that you told has never heard that in their life, even though probably a lot of people have noticed it. This is what I always try to tell people is like, just because someone is kind enough, <laughs> like pile three, to bring something up to you that they've noticed about you that's not great, um, doesn't mean they're the first to notice, unfortunately. Does not mean they're the first to notice. Um, a lot of people just won't say stuff like that because it's taboo, because they don't want to deal with the consequences, because they don't have proof to back it up. It's like a lot of people won't get called out because the people who are noticing these things don't have proof and they know how these things go. Um, but with you, Pal3, I'm saying that you'll say it. You got proof. You don't have proof. I feel like you're laying on tooth bombs on anybody to meet. Like, <laughs> you're really not afraid of doing that. And you might even um, come across wrong sometimes. But it's almost like you don't have that fear of someone turning on you. Or, or else you know how to deal with it. Um, and also, it just seemed like you're open to criticism as well. Like, you can dish it out and you can take it. So this is surprising. So maybe a lot of people are used to people who can dish it out, but really they're just assholes. They can't take back criticism or they get real mad. Whereas you're the kind of person that you might be a little brash and you might say things that other people would find too taboo to um, say, but you don't mind if other people also take that approach with you. You know, if you had something in your teeth, you wouldn't care if somebody told you that in public or if you were coming across kind of mean in that moment, and someone said, hey, you know, can you like be a little nicer? Um, you would take that pretty well. You'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Like, I, I just sense that energy with you where you are even handed in that way. And that's surprising to people. Could also be since you're a person who gives a lot of advice, um, people are surprised that you take advice as well or that you are still in need of help from the people around you. Okay. Queen of Wands is surprising. Your sex life might be surprising to people, Pile 3. The fact that you are a very sexual person might be surprising. You do have this kind of like cold, detached, um, let me phrase everything in a very clear, direct way. So then some people maybe don't assume that you are very sexual or very, that you care about romantic relationships because maybe that seems more um, emotional than what is in your real house. But then it turns out you're very sexual or you listen to very sexual music or um, your sex life really matters to you or something like that. Or that you have more or less sex than people imagine that you would, okay? Um, or the same with like your amount of sexual partners because that is something that people talk about. I think the amount of your sexual partners, if it's low or high, it's both of them are surprising. Neither are negative because I think it adds to your, you have this like kind of weird way of being, pal three, that is like just different than other people. There's a, there's a prickliness to you. Um, you're very much a rose with thorns. And this, this surprises people. Just bit my tongue. Hmm. Just as much as you can be confident with what you're saying, you can also like feel like maybe I made a mistake or you can kind of regret it. And you're so confident sometimes with your delivery that people are very surprised when you go back and was, was I too mean or was that okay? Or do you think I said that the right way? Um, like people are surprised by that as well. Okay, what is surprising or how does Pile 3 surprise people? Seven is Libra. So again, something with your relationships. Maybe your type is also surprising to people. Um, you know, when they look at your roster, or your history or something like that, they, they're they surprised by who you are interested in. Okay. 
12 is Pisces, and 4 is Cancer. How do you surprise people? Cancer, Pisces, Libra. You're more sensitive than people imagine you are. Um, yeah, I think with all this, like, surprising people with the words that come out of your mouth and how harsh and direct your delivery can be, the fact that you can kind of be self-conscious and shy or sensitive is surprising to people. Or that, that you really want to be diplomatic, but that you just sometimes come across kind of harsh. I think that's surprising to people, is that you are not trying to be center of intention. You are not trying to be intense or um, like a lot. Even that you might have like a self-consciousness because a lot of the words in, in your reading in particular, Pile 3, are not like perfect. And maybe they have, there's a self-consciousness here. People are surprised that you, of all people, this, you know, dynamic, amazing, intense, like not afraid to stand up and speak truth to power kind of person would be shy or think that you're awkward. It's something about the way you view yourself or what you think is going on is very different than how you're perceived and how people interact with you in the real world. Okay. The fool. It's just surprising how you can just jump forward even though you're dealing with these insecurities. People kind of assumed, they, they looked at your life, they saw you making big moves, they saw you, like I said, speaking truth to power, um, not being afraid of standing up to authority or bullies or something like that. Um, and they just assumed that you maybe just were born confident or like you never deal with second guessing what's going to happen or being afraid of what your actions will result in, but you actually are, are sometimes very afraid of how your <laughs> actions will be perceived or um, you'll, you're very afraid of what this might mean for you down the road. Like if I speak, if I, if I say something mean to my boss or I stand up for myself to my boss, are they going to fire me? You actually have those thoughts, but you still follow through. And that's what they say being brave is, is like, um, you do it scared. Yeah, that's beautiful. So yeah, okay. So you're really surprising people in a pleasant way right now because they're realizing that they could do it too because you do it scared. It's not that you're somehow um, more brave than everyone else. It's that you just do it anyway, okay? There is definitely something about like your sex life. Maybe you are very, you could be very religious. You could be very um, logical and right-brained. Um, and you could also be like very, um, about morality and, you know, what's good, what's bad, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? And yet you still are very sexual. And so this, this also surprises people and opens people's minds up. Um, because if you are very serious about your morals, but you're still okay with sex and you think that sex is natural, then maybe sex is natural or the same with, especially if you're religious and you're like sex, sexually positive or sex positive, like they used to say, um, do people still say that? But they did when I was in high school, sex positive was the thing. So like, maybe you don't think there's anything wrong with sex work and that it's real work or, um, that you don't really care if people have sex before marriage, that maybe you just think that people should wear condoms, but it's almost like you have this no nonsense approach to life and so people are surprised when this also includes stuff to do with sex or sexual or romantic relationships like you you bring that same approach to the to that sphere temperance the fool queen of wands and six of wands Honestly, yeah, pile three, I just feel like people are surprised that you don't see how much of a winner you are. You don't see how everybody views you so highly and they, they're surprised by this. So come on, pile three, like be more brave or be more, um, people, are, people are really liking what you're putting out. It's, I think your insecurities might be higher than they need to be. I think people are 
also surprised, again, there's this Libra and temperance thing where it turns out you are actually trying to be incredibly careful with what you say and do. <laughs> and this surprises people because it kind of seems like maybe you're very brash or you're very, um, yeah, willing to make a big move in terms of, you know, maybe blowing up on someone in public or you're not afraid of causing a scene. You're not afraid of, this is, this is people's, how people perceive you is that you're not afraid of causing a scene if it's for what's right. You're not afraid to go against the tides in terms of what you believe in. And, and you're not, af and, and even that you can come across very brash or harsh with your words, um, but that secretly you are trying your darndest to be very diplomatic, that you're secretly trying to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and taking it easy on people up until the very last minute. Um, and this is, this is surprising people, okay? It's surprising also, I think people, maybe they're thinking back to past conflicts you've had, or yeah, they're thinking back to past conflicts that you've had with other people, and they're like, okay, well, my conflict I know. Okay, so there's some people that are surprised by you that are people who you've recently had conflict with or recently um, made up with who have seen how you've given them chance after chance after chance to make up for their wrongdoing. And so this is making them look back to other times where they thought you were brash. They thought you were um, causing a scene kind of quickly or without a lot of thought behind how it's going to turn out. And they're realizing that you must have been at your breaking point. Like, I, I feel like that's something right now that people are surprised by with you, Pal 3, is old situations and how they're rethinking everything that happened. Because they know you to be so forgiving or they know you to be so worried about hurting other people. Like, I, I just feel like you, Pal 3, people are surprised how worried you are about hurting others. And I think the, the, the reason they're surprised by this is because you have had to come against people or you have had to blow up on somebody. And so to find out then that that must have been your final straw is shocking, is surprising. Okay, what else is surprising about, how does POW 3 surprise people? Mm, the star. The star, the fool, temperance. <laughs> Yeah, also that you have to keep it going for yourself and that all of this bravado that they believed you had is just not really there. It's just not really there. I think that's how you're surprising people, pile three. There's this bravado and ego, ego huge ego that people thought you had. They, they were okay with you having it, you know, like a good amount of them were like, okay, they have a big ego, they believe in themselves, they know what's right and wrong, and they're going to stand up for it. Great. But they're just realizing that that's not really what's going on. That you try to lean on saying the, the right thing or the nice thing or trying to be kind, like 90% of the time, it's just that they've seen you in extreme situations, maybe. And they didn't, maybe they didn't realize they were seeing you in an extreme situation. Okay. Yeah, there's just definitely something about here, um, Pal 3, that you've had to do everything on your own and you've had to raise yourself or something. Queen of Cups. Yeah, it's surprising that you're this Queen of Cups because you kind of have this maybe reputation. I think your reputation is what's causing people to be surprised by you because they, they know this reputation you have, which is loud, full of life, um, even aggressive or direct or cutthroat. And then the reality of you is kind of having a little bit of low self-esteem and caring way too much about what other people think and maybe being a people pleaser. And so it's shocking that even with that on your heart, the deep desire to please the people around you and to make everyone happy, you're still able to be this justice figure in life. Yeah, I think you're 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 also impressing people with this um, realization, pal three. Again, you're doing it scared. You do it even though you wish you could just be liked instead of having to stand up to the bully. <laughs> okay. King of Pentacles under Temperance. 
you know the value of a strong spot. You know the value of a family. Or you know the value of a strong workplace or strong leader. Again, there, there's something interacting with your reputation here, um, Pile 3, where you have this reputation of a loner or a reputation of somebody who hates authority or a reputation of being rebellious. Um, but I think that what's surprising people is that this reputation doesn't understand you. This reputation almost has nothing to do with your real personality. Um, the reputation happens because you've been pushed too far. That's where your reputation comes from. Um, that's what people are surprised by Pile 3 is that your reputation is actually coming from extreme scenarios and not from just your persona. And you're a person who seeks out the wrongdoer and makes them pay. It's more that you've had to hit your breaking point with certain situations. And that you would love to have a leader you could follow. You would love to just be at peace with your family. You would love to just be able to get by and, and make everyone happy. And this could be about a partner even. You you wish you could just um, keep, the, keep everything. I feel like people are surprised how much you respect and love peace. You don't want the fighting, but you will. And people are surprised by that. They thought you sought out situations where you're defending people or situations where you are meant to speak up because that's the kind of personality you have, but it's really not. You'd prefer to have peace. King of Wands and Queen of Wands. Wow. Yeah, I definitely feel like you are also a hopeless romantic and this surprises people that you are trying to make a leap. Like here we got the Queen of Wands into the Fool, which is clarified by the King of Wands. So it's like you are didn't know you don't know if you're gonna find the, that perfect person for you but you're taking that leap and you are trying and you really want that and you're kind of you have this like naive love of love um and this surprises people as well because again you're seen as this very harsh cutthroat person so that's surprising that you are you're not you don't have a list out and you're checking people off the boxes and crossing people out. You romanticize the people in your life and you wish they could be your counterpoint. And it's only after they've really sunk the ship themselves that then everybody sees you blow up on them or sees you cut them out so coldly. And they're looking at the situations post. But now maybe people are getting to know you during a situation or they've gotten to know details about the situation afterwards. And it's making them rethink this whole thing. It's definitely surprising them as well. Seven of Cups. You don't really like, yeah, it's like, I, I just feel like you don't really understand or like that you're center of attention. You don't really know what to do with people's sexual desire towards you. You don't really know what to do with people wanting to come towards you. It kind of freaks you out a little. Like there, there's a little bit of an awkwardness to you that is surprising people because you're seen as so 10 out of 10, you know, hot girl walking down the street and she knows it um, or, you know, put a different gender. But like that's, that's the vibe you give off. So then to find out that you're going to get confused and you kind of get um, worried and you kind of feel like you're not up to par or like maybe the person that you love won't even want you or like you have these doubts that is so surprising to people ten of pentacles i just feel like what's surprising about you pal three is that you were backed into a corner you had to be your own boss you had to do it all by yourself you had to pave the way it wasn't that you just hated authority and wanted to break away from your small town. It's that you were given no choice. You were ostracized or you were forced by such bad behavior that you had to leave. And this is surprising people. So that's, yeah, Nine of Wands, perfect. You're the wounded warrior. You're healing from things. Um, and that's not how people saw it before. It's not how people saw it before. So that's what I've got for you. Um, we'll finish out with some music videos. Yeah, there's just something about that where it's like it's not how people saw it before. So this is a perfect um, one for you. And so is this. Because it's like, good for you. I like this because she kind of looks a little crazy in this. Like, um, she has that like crazy look in, your, in her eye that's like, 
don't I look good for you? <laughs> you like me, right? You know, and I feel like you do have some of that. And you shouldn't be ashamed of that, by the way. I hope that it finds you well to, to hear that because it's surprising people because of how highly they view you. They're shocked that you would have any insecurity at all. So that should tell you what they think of you, which is they think very good things. And it's the same kind of thing with Say Bitch. In the beginning, she said that, um, you know, people thought there were, there were these girls that thought that she was trying to diss them or say something negative about them when she was actually trying to compliment them. And that comes from people assuming that you think you're better than them. And so there might have been some people that thought you felt you were better than them. But in reality, you were just insecure and you didn't know how to handle that situation. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know what that's related to. Um, you'll have to know that for yourself. Yeah, there's this, there's this sense that you don't see see what everyone else sees about you they don't yeah they, yeah I feel like that's what's surprising is that you don't see how good you are somehow um you don't see where you actually stand in the hierarchy of life you have a wrong interpretation of that and that's what's surprising people um Yeah, you might be able to see other people's worth very easily and then you don't really see your own as easily. That was surprising. I like this too. It's like, again, you might be someone who believes in true love or thinks that you've got a soulmate out there and so you don't want, to, you don't like all these options. You would rather just have your counterpart. Um, like your other half. You know, like that's what you're looking for and you don't like all these options. Whereas people maybe before thought that you were just the hot person around town who had everybody who could get anyone they want, but you're actually very overwhelmed with that and it doesn't feel like a positive thing. Yeah, also that you're, you're again, with this like sense that you're a romantic and that's surprising to people that you would switch teams for the person you love, <laughs> you know, like, or you would um, change your mind about stuff because of love or that you would take criticism is also surprising what else What's surprising about pile number three how is pile number three surprising people yeah you definitely keep rising up from the ashes and Again, there's this sense that people are surprised at how you're misinterpreting what they thought was happening. So maybe you're interpreting correctly, but from other people's perspective, you they're surprised because maybe you told a story about when you were younger and, they, and you were like, it was really terrible and I looked terrible. And then they saw a picture and you don't look terrible or so, something like that to where um, they're like, okay, well, it seems like insecurities are kind of clouding your vision right now, pile three. <laughs> like, that's what they're saying It's like, oh, I think they hated me. And the person is surprised that you would say that because they loved you and that's obvious. Okay. It's like some of these things, they're just, they're surprised at where you're coming from. And I think that's what it comes down to is they're surprised at where this is coming from, where this where your actions are coming from. Because your actions are so s straightforward, your actions are so direct, um, aggressive, confident, but then they're finding out that where it's coming from is having been suppressed. Or maybe they see your actions and then they hear your plans and, and your desires and it's, it's different. It's much, it's, it's really surprising them basically. It's just like, um, hearing your backstory is surprising because they know where you are today. A lot of stuff with partnership here. Um, so maybe also somebody got to see you in a relationship and they've never seen you in a relationship before, or they could have, um, heard about your relationship or somebody might have seen you be all lovey-dovey and that is 
surprising to them because of how cutthroat you act at times. Yeah, okay. So I think there's there's a lot of things surprising people about you right now. Um, pile, pile three, especially stuff to do with your love life is surprising people. Like what you want is like this fairy tale, him and I, us together kind of thing. And maybe people have seen you end up in this kind of energy. And so they didn't know that it was that serious for you. They just saw you as maybe a player, someone who can have any any person they want and is kind of like non-committal or something. But they're realizing that people pursue you and everything, but what you really want is like a full-on relationship and depth. And they kind of thought you were running the show and you were more of a player type, but it doesn't turn out to be true. You just can't be tamed. You can't be like saddled with stuff you don't want. And if somebody turns on you enough times, it's like it's over, but you're actually a hopeless romantic. I think with your friendships too, it's like you would forgive and forgive. Maybe you forgive too much and that's what people are finding out. Again, there's something about your worth mixed in there where people are finding out that you don't correctly see your value. Even though your actions, you'll follow through on good things. It's more like, yeah, just the fact that you still have a bit of a self-esteem thing is surprising to people. It's very surprising to people. So, but not a good face. But yeah, that's what I've got for you, um, pile three. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Okay. Pile number four. Right. Pile number four, I think you're surprising people because you are more confident than they thought you were. You're more on up there than they thought you were. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the, the fact that you view yourself higher than they thought you did. Maybe they thought they could play with you. You know, that's that's that could be a place in which this could be found out and it would be surprising. Like, they thought they were just talking to someone who wasn't really listening, but you were actually very much listening, or they thought they were talking to somebody who they could manipulate, but you, you know, you knew the whole time, or um, this is kind of old news to you, or people have done way, way worse. Huh. This is an interesting kind of feeling I'm getting here. Ooh, you're surprising people because you're making them wait. You're surprising people because they're getting a little irritated. Interesting. You're surprising someone because you're making them mad. Three of Wands and Ace of Pentacles. I'm just getting this impression that you joined a staring contest with someone and they thought they would win right away and you're still in the running. Yeah. Just the fact that you haven't given up or you haven't caved is surprising someone. So uh, I, I, as far as like how do you surprise people in general, I do think you, you outlast people and you... Um, you have a stronger constitution than people expect. You can handle more than people expect, or you can, you're more stick, you have more stick to than people expect. You're a lot less needy than people thought. So I don't know if this is like somebody in particular. Um, if it's not somebody in particular, then definitely just try to generalize the statements I'm making because in the energy, 
it feels specific. It feels like a person is surprised by you right now. Or you're surprising someone right now by pissing them off because you haven't given up yet and they thought they were going to win. It's giving like um, that episode in Parks and Rec where it's like the um, Nepo baby son of some billionaire for Sweetums is running against Leslie Nope. And at the very beginning, he's like, can you just give up? I want this. Give this to me. I want this. And she's like, no, I'm not going to give up. And he's like, oh, come on, give up. I want, I have, I, I deserve this. I want this. And you're just like kind of confused by this person. So it's surprising that you don't just give them what they want and give up. Wow. <laughs> okay, so, wow. Mm. I think that's also surprising people, though, is you're surprising people by looking down on them, um, by not seeing them in a high light, by not reaching out, by not trying to make peace, by not seeing this person as dangerous, like someone you need to bow down to and to make amends with or else. It's again, it's, it is giving that sweet, um, I have to inc include a clip of that scene. Yeah, I'm not sure if this person is just really used to easier opponents or everyone sucking up to them all the time, but they're very much surprised that you are not sucking up to them and that not only are you not sucking up to them or you're not seeing them in a highlight, but you're you're looking down on them actively. Like you think it's pathetic or kind of weird or why would you think? It's almost like they're surprised that you're confused. They're surprised that you don't know what you're supposed to be doing in this scenario. Um, again, it is giving that suck up energy. It's like, don't you know that you're supposed to be sucking up to me? Don't you know that I could do something for you? Don't you know that you should want my approval? And you don't care for this person's approval. Or you don't care for people's approval if we want to generalize it. You don't. And that's surprising to others. Is that you don't need the boss's approval. Or you don't need the praise of the matriarch or something. Hmm. Yeah, that you're not trying to resolve a conflict with a higher up. That's, that's what I'm getting right now is like, you have some sort of conflict with either someone who is literally your boss and providing you money, or maybe it's a grandparent who provides money in a way because someday they'll die and have an inheritance or, um, so those are the two situations where it makes the most sense, where there's like literally money on the table and you're not sucking up to someone who has that over your head in a way. Um, and then there's the other half of this where I feel like you're surprising people by not sucking up to or making amends with someone who has some sort of other kind of clout, other kind of power over you. Um, this is something I was just thinking about the other day, but if this is, this is for the person you're surprising. If there's always someone beneath you, that means there's always someone above you. Once you start to see that everyone's equal, and we all have to work together and work on an even playing field, then, yeah, nobody will be beneath you. You're not going to be able to stomp people under your feet, but there's not going to be anyone over you looking down on you anymore either. So it's a good thing um, to not have people above or beneath you. Um, you only think you want someone beneath you because you need an outlet for the pain you experience from people above you. It's like, it's like when your manager at Starbucks or Subway starts bitching at you because their boss is bitching at them, but in regular life. It's like, you know that boss is only bitching at you because their, their boss is telling them they better hurry up. But when you take yourself out of those scenarios, then nobody's on your back, so you don't have to be on anybody else's back. Okay, and your way of thinking about that is, is surprising people and someone. Knight of Swords. It, it's, it's something about your different way of looking at things. Um, and also that you, 
you feel outside of this somehow. Like you feel like you're looking down on this a whole scenario. Like it's stupid or short-sighted. I feel like you, you're surprising people by um, thinking that stuff that they find very, very important is short-sighted and stupid and not worth thinking about. Uh, yeah, okay. Death and Page of Pentacles. There's an avoidance here. Maybe you're avoiding people and this is surprising them. It's surprising them that you haven't come back around to make amends or, or make peace with them. I'm really getting that strongly and I don't like that energy. Um, I'm not going to kiss the ring. And that's what I get from you, Paul Four, is you're not going to kiss the ring. And I'm just going to avoid you because you're kind of... You're kind of skeeving me out. That's what I'm getting in your energy about for. It's like people are surprised because you're getting skeeved out by them. You kind of think their behavior is gross instead of obvious and respectable. And well, I have something to offer you. So of course you need to bring your proposal to me. And it's like, well, I didn't ask you for anything. So why do I need to come and beg and borrow from you? I don't want that. I don't want to do that. And maybe everyone wants to beg and borrow from this person or these people, or everyone needs to suck up to the boss because that's the only way you get hours. Or everyone needs to be nice to grandpa even when he's saying slurs because he's only gonna live so much longer and don't you wanna be in the will? And it's like, no, fuck your will. Fuck your will. That's that's the energy I'm getting from you, Pal Vora. It's like, fuck you. And I hope I don't get like demonetized on this video, but you're surprising people because you have a fuck you attitude. I don't have to cross your bridge. I'm going to burn it. Yeah, you know how to swim, Paul Ford. You don't, you don't need anybody who's going to try to make you feel less than them. Oh, yeah. I'm just getting like a, a really from you. And it's truly not the response they expected. Truly surprising. Seven of Cups. Yeah, I feel like you have a lot of options and you don't make a choice ahead of time. Um, I, I get this a lot in readings and I've been, maybe I've just been noticing it lately, but there's this idea that you can't predict the future um, unless somebody is trapped in an old pattern. <laughs> like if somebody is really in tune with their intuition, in tune with how they feel, um, knows what they want out of life, then you're not going to be able to predict their future because they're going to be making adjustments based on what someone brings to them, how they felt that day, what else is going on in their lives. You know, they're making adjustments of their decisions and how they respond to people based on things they're noticing. So maybe this person thought, this person that you're surprising pal for, it's like they thought that if they did an action that they knew how you would react and you reacted so differently than they expected. So then they threw something else at you and it just kept happening where they're, they're starting to be surprised and realize that you don't have a plan. You'd go off of how you're feeling and right now you're not feeling great about them. So again, this could be a family member or this could be somebody who you're supposed to have to get along with. Yeah, a family member or a coworker or a boss. This would be unbelievable behavior from a coworker, <laughs> but it, it happens every day. So I wouldn't be like so shocked. Please put in the comments if this is some really stupid coworker who really thought that you wouldn't start a fight with them just because you like to keep the peace. No, I don't like you. I'm avoiding you. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something about that. You don't like them. You're avoiding them. And that's surprising. Okay. Um, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I'm skeeved out by this person, pal four. Um, and maybe they're not like such a bad person. Cause like in, in that episode of, um, Parks and Rec, it's like, he's just kind of been spoiled his whole life and he's just not really thinking it through. Um, and he's never been told no. So he's just like surprised by her saying that. It's not that he's even like, hates her or anything he's just shocked that she doesn't cave okay <laughs> yeah so it might be like that with a coworker or um a boss it's like 
it's like they want to shake you. I'm, I'm getting like you're surprising people because they want to shake you and be like, can't you see what this situation is? I'm above you. <laughs> And I, it's funny, and I'm sensing that you think it's funny too, Pal Four. Like, part of you is skeeved, and then part of you is like, up, like I said, above it. Like, this is very short sighted. This is not going to matter to me in a year. You know, like something about that where it's like, I don't care. <laughs> you have like an I don't care energy. But if they're going to push you, then fuck you. But most of it is like, why do I need to suck up to you? Like, I don't need anything from you. I don't want anything from you. Whatever. If if you want to turn on me and cut me out of the well or um, fire me or make my life at, at work a living hell, that's your choice. You're deciding to do that. That has nothing to do with me or how I'm reacting to you. Um, yeah. Cool. Your cool head is also surprising people. And again, it's like this, this idea that you're not wasting your time planning around this person or these people. Like you're not wasting your time thinking about how you could turn things in your favor or taking every opportunity to either fight this person or make it up to them. So like they kind of would imagine you would go one of those ways, um, but you're just kind of stepping out of it, stepping outside of it. And you react however you feel to react every time you have an interaction with this person. Um, Like I said, this person not, might not be a bad person, but they definitely needed a wake-up call because you can't just go around thinking that it's obvious that you're better than everyone and they better um, treat you exactly how you imagined they would treat you. Because like, it's like this person puts everybody into categories and everybody in this category reacts to me this way and everybody in this category um, helps me with my projects and everybody in this category stays away from me and is my enemy. Um, and you're not really putting yourself in any of those boxes. And if they try to put you in one, you're like, no thanks. Um, like, no, no thanks. I'm just getting like way less energy than I was expecting. And I feel like that's what's surprising people about you right now, um, Pal Four, is you are giving situations le way less energy than they thought you were going to or they thought that you were. Perfect. Yeah, you're not scared. You're not scared in the slightest. That's kind of what I'm getting is like, Okay, well, anyways, <laughs> yeah, this, I'm just getting with your energy. Anyways, like, I have I have other things going on. <laughs> you're just kind of waiting to see whatever this person does, and you'll react however you're going to react. But you're kind of not, yeah, you're not focusing on it, and you're not taking initiative. That's another thing that's surprising is that you're sitting in this hierophant position of, I'm already good where I'm at. I don't need anything. So why would I be the one to approach you? It sounds like you need something from me. So you should be approaching me, not the other way around. And this is surprising. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let me give some scenarios here too, because I feel like it's, it's relevant. This person could be conventionally attractive. They could have money. Um, they could view themselves as a popular person around town. Um, but it's also something about status. They could view themselves as a higher status than you. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing with their energy a very detached, obvious, matter of fact kind of way of viewing that and not, not necessarily like they're looking down on you and actively making judgments about you that's making them think that you're less than them it's more that they think well this is just how it is this is the class I was born into which is above your class so your class sucks up to my class so I mean maybe they're just older than you and so they think that their age means that you have to suck up to them I've seen this with coworkers. now this is where the coworker scenario makes a lot of sense it's like Every time you have a coworker that's older than you, they think they can talk down to you. They, even if they're not your boss or supervisor at all, you're just a young person and an old ass person with the same job. They think they can talk down to you. They can say whatever they want, or you need to be looking to them for advice. 
but it's like, I don't need your help with the job. I don't need your help with anything. Why would I want to take advice from you? You work the same job as me and you're way older. <laughs> you know, if we're going to play petty, then we can. If we're going to play petty, then fuck you. But if we're not playing petty, then I don't care. You know, and, and it's like, that's just really surprising. They just thought you'd be more invested. They thought you would need their approval. They thought that you would need their guidance. Or even that if you didn't need their guidance or didn't need their approval, that you would fake it and you would act like you did to try to get something from them. So sad for them that they think everyone is trying to get something from them. If this is a person of a high class or has money or is attractive or whatever, um, it's sad that they think that everyone comes towards them just to get something from them and basically steal from them so much. They think this so much that they're mad that you're not trying to steal from them. <laughs> so that's crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know that this person has really looked into why they do and say the things they do and say. And so everything you do is very surprising to them only because it's different than how everybody else has treated them. So maybe this person also has not gone out that much or, you know, it's kind of like only hung out with a certain type of person. And it kind of seems like the type of people this person was hanging out with suck. Um, but if it's your boss or your grandparent or a coworker, then don't feel bad for them because old ass people need to get on board and they need to figure their shit out. I'm tired of it. Um, sorry to Rhea, but I'm fucking tired of it. Like, you've had way more time than me. So, and way more resources. Surely you could have figured something out by now. Um, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like people are surprised. And yeah, people in general are surprised by you, Pal4, because you do have this kind of attitude where you don't look up to someone just because they're rich. You don't look up to someone just because they're pretty. You don't look up to someone just because they're your boss. It doesn't matter to you. You think about other things. You have other qualifiers for what's going to make someone important to you. Okay, let's keep going. Ten of Swords, yeah. Just the fact that you dead, deaded something. You deaded something that other people saw as useful to you. You burned a bridge that people thought you would definitely try to walk across. Even if they knew that there were, even if they knew that this person that you're burning a bridge with was mean, they just didn't think you would do it because of the outcome you could have. Like I said, being put in the will or, or, or being um, thought of as the favorite grandchild or there, there's some sort of, or getting, getting employee of the month. I don't know. Yeah. There's something where people are surprised that you don't want this reward or you don't want this opportunity. Or you don't care to stay on good terms with someone who could give you money or has more than you or is thought of as higher class than you, you know? Yeah, you don't want to be friends with the pretty popular person. And everyone's very surprised by that. But you're not making an enemy of them either, which is also surprising. It's like, I, I guess these people are just used to either you're an enemy or you're someone who kisses the ground I walk on and they really need to get out of that fucking energy. Like I, I am, I'm really irritated with this pile and I, maybe, maybe it's also surprising how irritated you are with this person or these people because to understand your irritation, they would need to understand where you're coming from and, and they don't, <laughs> they don't. They really don't. They think this is just the natural order. This is how things go. But let me tell you, it isn't, it's not going to be, and you better get on board real quick because things are shifting. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Things are shifting. You're surprising people pile four because you are with the times. You know, as well as me, that things are not fucking working. So if you're in charge, I actually like you less because you're not doing your job. So if you're going to say that you're in this high class or you're a boss or you're the head of the family... I kind of hate you. If we're gonna, if you're gonna ask me, if you're gonna be direct, I kind of hate you because I've seen the way you work. I've seen the way, what you like. I've seen what makes them cheer, and I don't care. I gotta include that. <laughs> I gotta include that clip of um, Rick and Morty too because I actually feel like you're in that Rick energy of 
Go ahead and boo. I've seen what makes you cheer. I don't give a shit what you think. You're obviously wrong. So, wow. <laughs> you know, four of pentacles. And you're serious and you're not changing your mind. Like you're holding on and you're not changing your mind. And you you have a long memory as well, um, power four. And people are, people are surprised by this. They're realizing this. And they're not loving it. They're not loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like your priorities and... <laughs> yeah, don't call me perfect. Mm-hmm. I like this too. Because this is like... She finds out that she was the other woman and she immediately breaks it off and goes to the other woman. So there is something where you're keeping your morals and turning against people who were on your side because they've done wrong is, is surprising people. And again, you don't want, if for women, maybe you're surprising people because you don't want male validation or you find this whole, um, a lot of these men to be pathetic. This is just an example. It can also um, be if you're a man, it could be that you don't want a bunch of women after you. You find it, you kind of skeevy. Um, you don't want a burden, <laughs> you, you know, like something like that, where you're seeing things, from my perspective, you're seeing things clearly, pal for it. You see things very clearly that if I'm gonna have a girlfriend who is only after me for my money, and just wants me because uh, I'm a good time or I'm seen in a high light, that means that I'm gonna be drained dry. And hanging out with this person who's supposed to be my girlfriend is gonna make me feel empty, you know? So it's like, I, I feel like you see things clearly that other people are just missing. You're just weirded out by some of this stuff too. I, I'm just getting like, you being Jesse in this scenario and you being like, oh, so you're not even my real friend? You don't even want to be my friend? Then get away from me. No, I'm not going to suck up to you. Yeah, it's like, it's like, is someone mad at you and you're like, if you're mad at me over that, then actually I should hate you. It's almost like you found out something or you're seeing how someone's reacting to a situation and you're like, oh, Oh no, if that's how it is, then I actually hate you. Like if that's how you're gonna act, then I don't know why we were even in contact to begin with. Because this is this is guy's friend. So it's almost like the girl finds out and she's like, oh, well, I just thought we were friends. And so you're like secretly hating me and my boyfriend, you know, like that kind of energy. It's like, mm -mm, no, <laughs> don't call me, get away from me. Like if, if it's like that, that's what I'm getting is, is, but I'm also getting like, you haven't made up your mind about anyone. And that's surprising too. It's not, you haven't put someone in the enemy column and you haven't tried to make up with them. You just like to see how people choose to interact and you make your choice based on that. So if somebody is going to apologize, then you're open to hearing it. But if somebody is going to come at you, like, why didn't you give me what I wanted? Why didn't you Act how everyone else acts towards me. Why don't you see that I'm better than you? Then fuck you. Why don't you see that um, I have I have more resources than you, so you should be trying to suck up to me so that I give you something? Fuck you. No. Okay. I just thought that you had your resources, I had mine, and we were coming together. Um, and if you had more to give, that you would. But then you're you're figuring out that they have more to give. They want. They could give you more they could be there more for you or nicer or more understanding like the coworker example if they have information that could help you on the job and they're purposely holding it back until you suck up enough to them to where they feel like you deserve that knowledge or you deserve that attention attention if it's a family member well i don't think you've deserved the spot of favorite grandchild so i'm gonna withhold my love until you've sucked up enough then fuck you. No. Yeah, 
that. But I, I don't know. Tell me in the comments down below what this is about because that's really interesting. Um, okay, let's see. What, how does Pile 4 surprise people? Nine is Sagittarius. 12 is Pisces. There's something of a high priestess to you, Pile 4. Um, and feel free to Google the meaning in detail. But high priestess is like somebody who just sits back and watches. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what happens. And I like the gargoyle we had first there too for you. It's like somebody who's looking down and just watching things play out. Let's see how it plays out. And then I'll make my decision. Then I'll decide what to do. Nobody's going to push me because of their unspoken rules of engagement. And two is Taurus. Yeah, your, your stubbornness is definitely um, surprising people. That's, that is for sure. Yep. Yeah, it's almost like, it's kind of like disheartening. It's like, oh. And I feel like how this taps into how you're surprising people is that they're reading this off of you. They're reading that you're kind of disgusted by their actions. They're reading that you kind of like them less because of this situation, um, which is the exact opposite from how they thought. They thought you'd feel bad. They thought you would try to suck up even more. Um, they thought they'd maybe get a gift or something. <laughs> like, really, 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 Pile 4. Honestly, this person thought that they would pull back their energy and show you that they thought they were better than you. And in response, you would get them a gift. I just need to sit with that for a second because they were headed down the wrong direction. What's that thing old people say? It's like, you're barking up the wrong tree, bucko. <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree, bucko. That's what I've got for you, Pal4. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy having fun and having a great life. And these people can suck it or they could suck up to you for, for a change, even though you're so beneath them. Oh no. Oh no. They might lose or they might, um, feel beneath somebody who they think is too young, too stupid, too poor to be above them. They might lose to them. Mm. Let's pray for these people. Pile four. Why don't we? Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.